And there we go. Hello, welcome everyone to another community call. Uh, we'll start off with a brief presentation by Wafa on the marketing strategy that we should implement. Wafa. Oh, I guess you didn't hear me before. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Wafa and I am working um, me and um, Ricardo and Dr. Scott have been working together on coming up with a strategy for uh, branding and marketing uh, the research hub community and the research hub um, services. And we came up with our first marketing campaign and I'm gonna share a little bit with you um, because we do need the help of the community to make this campaign a success and we will be reaching out to you guys for a lot of uh, for a lot of help, guidance, and um, you know, input. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you. Hmm. Okay. Can you see this? Yep. Alrighty. So this is just this is a picture that's just summarize everything that we're trying to do with our marketing team. Um, I'm just going to go through it really quickly, and then I'm just going to go through um, the PowerPoint presentation where it's going to be uploaded um, somewhere. I don't know where, but you're going to have access to that. So first of all, our first marketing campaign, our objective is to increase brand awareness, and we want to lay the foundation for having a strong media presence. The second goal, we want to have build uh, brand affinity and improve our reputation in that space. And we have here our target audience who we are targeting. And these target audience were built based on actually observing the community and seeing who are actually actively participating in the community. And this is our marketing strategy. This is our target platform, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're gonna have blogs. And based on popular demand, we're gonna have TikTok. We're gonna do a little bit of promotion on TikTok. Um, we came up, our brand, our um, uh, marketing team came up with uh, a plan for each platform that's going to be in the PowerPoint presentation. You can take a look at, that, uh, at it. And then we have here the promotion. We're going to do email outreach. We're going to conduct online events. And this is just a few, not everything. Um, and we're going to do, we're going to, um, for the influencers, we're still discussing it, but then we're going to have uh, social media, post on Twitter uh, and LinkedIn, and create content uh, on YouTube and, and um, blog and TikTok. So for the time frame, and this is where we need the help of the community. For March, we need to start recruiting people from our community to join us um, in the uh, branding team and the marketing team, so we can make this a reality. Uh, because there is a lot of uh, a lot to do with um, media outreach and, you know, uh, spreading the word. And then we need, if you are interested, please, please reach out to me, reach out to Antoine, Patrick, or Ricardo, or Dr. Scott. Please reach out to us. We would love to have you with our, in our team. And then we're going to start, we're going to launch off the campaign. We're going to start seeing it, start seeing the work in April. And then we're going to regroup again to talk about this campaign on December of this year to see if we actually attain these objectives or not. Um, so yeah, this is the, I would say, so this is what, what I have to say for now. And then I'm gonna share with you, can you see my um, PowerPoints? Yes. Alrighty, I'm gonna keep going. I, I don't see you guys, so please let me know. So this is our research branding campaign. This is the file that I shared with the uh, uh, community leaders last week. And there is a recording of the presentation. Um, I don't know where it is, where it was uploaded, but you will find it, <laughs> but I'm just gonna go through it really quickly and just to show you what we are actually doing just to entice you to join our team because we really need the help of the community to make this happen. Um, this is our goals, um, uh, target demographic. This is our marketing strategy for each platform. And then we can hear, here we have our Twitters, our goals, our metrics that we're going to be uh, 
um, that we're going to be measuring, and then just type of content. We already came up with ideas for the type of content. And please, if you have any ideas you want to share with us, um, uh, content you think it would be great uh, to be posted on the uh, any of the, these platforms, please reach out to us. We would love to, have, to hear your opinion. And then here, just like type of content for Twitter. Um, even here, uh, target people to interact with that um, would be helpful for our community. And then we just have here even posting guidelines. And it's the same for each um, each of the platform. We really um, um, we looked at the metrics goals as well, and then this type of content that we want to present. Um, and then this is as well for YouTube. For YouTube, we have really great plans. We're gonna have a plan to have another uh, community calls. We're gonna start organizing journal clubs. Um, we're gonna start organizing webinars and seminars, and we already have ideas to who we wanna reach out to. So if you have an idea for a good um, webinar or seminar, please reach out. And then we have, we're gonna also plan to have promotional video for Research Hub to be posted there. Um, also, yeah, I guess it's just, then we have TikTok. Okay, we're not gonna see that, but we have TikTok and we're gonna start posting some um, content there. And then we have our emails outreach. We're gonna start sending emails to people just to let them, uh, just to alarm them or just like entice them to claim their paper that was uploaded by someone else. Um, this is uh, Ricardo. Um, Ricardo came up with this idea. Thank you very much. Um, it's a really great idea. And then we have the own like um, how the the email is going to be sent. And we're trying to be very strategic because we don't want to end up in the junk mail or considered as a predatory um, institution. And yeah, this is all I have. Uh, please, if you have any question, any questions for me um, or anything, please let me know. Yeah, we would really love to make this a reality and we need your help. Go ahead, Kobe. Kobe. Uh, yeah, thank you for doing this. This is pretty awesome and very comprehensive. Um, can you guys hear me, by the way? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, uh, I'm, 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 okay. Yeah, thank you for doing this. This is really um, great. I'm just um, wondering regarding uh, the Twitter strategy. Um, is the intention that uh, we're just going to have like one Twitter account where we will be tweeting from, or just multiple, rather multiple accounts where um, editors will be tweeting? For now, my recommendation was, and this is open for discussion, because we do not have a strong media presence in Twitter. We do not have a strong media presence in uh, LinkedIn. Is that we do not want to have a specific individual for each hub that will deviate the attention and will not concentrate on creating the name of the brand. This is actually our plan for the second marketing campaign, uh, which is going to start next year. But for now, we just, as you said, our goals is just to cement our our. Uh, presence in the scientific community supplements so our presence in this in the network and the in Twitter and those social media um, yep. and that could be the next step because I don't want us to have more than than one account managing that would be difficult um, you know and just um, and again we just want to spread the word about research hub for now uh, and then we're going to start spreading the word about different hubs yeah thank you um, and, and that makes sense and the second second question I have was about um, sending like a bulk email to the authors on the platform. I like that idea. Um, my question is, have you, guys, have you discussed like how you're going to get the author emails? Um, because we could check in to help like uh, provide like a, basically like a giant list of emails to paper mapping. So I'm not sure if uh, that would be beneficial. Um, I would let Ricardo answer that. Ricardo, would you like to take over? Yeah, sorry, I I didn't get um what is it like the 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 voice kind of like uh, talked. So can you like please repeat? Yeah, no. My question was uh, if you're going to send a bulk email to all the authors, encouraging them to claim their papers on the platform, how are you going to get these uh, the list of emails? Uh, how are we going to get these emails out? Like if 
or the, the list of videos, so like the people. I think, are, bit. I think I understand here what's going on. Kobe, Kobe's curious how we get people's emails if we're going to invite authors to claim their papers. Um, so oftentimes on a paper, there's one corresponding author. But if you want to actually do some internet research, it's pretty easy to find most like established academics emails. Like they'll have like a lab website where you can contact them. So it might take a little bit of like manual labor, something that can't be automated. But like if you want to spend 10 minutes looking up an author's name and you have their institutional affiliation, it's like maybe like a 65% success rate of finding their email. So I think we can do a lot of it manually if there are specific papers that we want to like get in touch with the authors. Yeah, and I think we discussed this already, like we also discussed this strategy that it's probably better if we target uh, PhD and postdoc first, instead of like, uh, let's say tenure track uh, professors that are maybe, I don't know, first or last author, because, you know, probably like PhDs and postdocs are like easier to, to, yeah, to get involved in this. Alec? One other group that I think that we can add, at least for the medical hubs, is um, somehow if we can get the medical science liaisons from pharmaceuticals uh, to be involved, uh, you know, especially their papers, which are open access and their trials and stuff, then they will be more than, you know, they're, they're always keen on like, you know, telling more about their new medication, their side effects, their uses. If this is a platform where there are, you know, physicians and researchers, they'll be you know, willing to give their uh, two cents for it. That's an interesting thought, Malik. Um, um, I've thought before that like startup founders, like biotech startup founders might also like want like an opportunity to kind of like create a forum to help to market their technology. So yeah, pharmaceutical sales that I'm sure they would do presentations uh, on their clinical trials. That's a great idea. Any other thoughts on the marketing campaign? We'll put together all the materials and make them available for editors and community members. I think like a quick plug for this part too is, um, so like we we're uh, talking about setting up some working groups. Um, and so I know that the community like has ideas and they wanna get involved. And I think um, setting up the working groups, maybe via channels on Slack for now, would be a good way to just get everybody who's interested in marketing uh, together and you can have a little think tank there. And um, I'm sure Ricardo will go into this a little bit on his part, but we have um, the DWORK, uh, our organization on DWORK set up. Um, and so over there we could set up uh, bounties. So if there is a lot of like say manual labor in hunting down people's emails, for example, um, and someone's willing to do that, we can set up a bounty for that, have those emails get routed to um, Lafa or somebody else, and then they can be in control of uh, actually distributing like a kind of standardized email out to a lot of these people. So uh, just a couple plugs um, for those things. I believe we will be using a lot of this feature and a lot of the stuff that we require um, for marketing, uh, for content creation and stuff like that. So we will be utilizing this feature a lot. Um, for now, we're just, we just need um, members of the community to get on board uh, with marketing. Thanks for putting this together, Wafa. I'm excited to see what it looks like once we start to get uh, some people working on it. Me too. Yeah, me too. Should we move on? That sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Kobe, are you going to present the NFT mock-up? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? Yep. I have some tech yep. issues today with my computer. Yeah, it's so like a little muffled, Kobe. I don't, I don't know. If it's like a tiny bit muffled. Uh, oh, yeah, I see. OK. It's actually using the wrong microphone. Can you guys hear me better now? So much better. Nice. Um, yeah, we did some early exploration around how NFTs can be integrated into Research Hub. And <clears throat> what we did was we created some low fidelity wireframes we wanted to share with you. Um, so again, like these are really early like mocks that are meant to elicit uh, some feedback and discussions. Um, and just to iterate 
uh, we are very interested in research hub in NFTs because we think they can uh, help reshape the scientific landscape. Um, there are a lot of organizations that are using them in really cool ways, and we would like to experiment as well. Um, and we also think they can be like really powerful uh, fundraising mechanism. <clears throat> and, you know, last point here is that they can also help Research Hub generate some revenue, which is nice as well, right? Um, so the big idea here, let me share my screen one second. Uh, one second. Okay. Can you all see the uh, NFT screen? I'll make it bigger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the big idea here is that published content through the ELN will be minted as fractionalized NFT. And people that want to invest in science or own a piece of science can purchase these fractions of the minted NFTs. So I just took like the perspective of like, oh, what if Albert Einstein was to use our like uh, ELN and mint some NFTs? So like... Um, Let's say uh, the starting point here is in our ELN feature. So if you've not seen it, it's basically where you can publish some content. So let's say I wrote, uh, Albert wrote this like general theory of relativity paper uh, here uh, in orange. I highlighted all the uh, call to actions area in orange. So if you see that, you can pay attention to it. So if you click publish, um, this uh, modal would show up. Uh, where you can enter the basic information like authors, hubs, and other basic info. So this is already something that we're already um, have in place, but what we don't have in place is this new option to mint NFT. So you can see, um, you can uh, basically like fractionalize the ownership of your publication. So let's say um, I click here, I'm taken to the next page where uh, I'm basically adding an NFT. I can upload an image or video representing my um, NFT. So if there is like maybe some interesting like uh, graphic that is associated with the paper that um, should be used as like kind of like a, a visual to capture um, attention and and uh, like around the NFT, then those should be uploaded here. Uh, title of the NFT, it's debatable whether it should be the paper title or something else brief description uh, of this particular edition that you're minting, um, number of editions. So like it could be like one edition or it can be like uh, 10,000 uh, and then the price per edition. And, you know, this is like, again, so we're talking about high level exploration. So one thing we can also do is add some utility where you can uh, basically like uh, put some interesting things that will come that the owner of the NFT can uh, can obtain, like for example, access to Albert's ELN, maybe some Q and A session, um, some access to like an event uh, or one time tour of the lab or something like that. Uh, you can all hear me still, by the way, because my internet is like... yep. Okay, cool. So here we uh, just an example of like adding some details. Um, you can preview your NFT. You can save and continue in which case you're, you'll be taken to back to this model. You can see like you have two check marks. You're ready to go, ready to publish. You can publish now or you can even schedule your publication for later, uh, kind of like YouTube style, I guess, if you want it to be published like first thing in the morning or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and then from here, like a couple of things happen. So um, yeah, so like the first thing, and this is like super like, future state kind of thing. But um, so the first thing that will happen automatically, so without the users like um, needing to do anything is that a new block will be added to a particular DSI blockchain of our choice. So either we build this blockchain or we like integrate with a DSI blockchain. And the purpose of this blockchain is to basically store uh, like particular science -y actions in a DSI blockchain. So this a publication will be one of those actions. Uh, here in this example, you can see like we have experiment results, uh, other publications, some peer review, some claim verification. 
So this uh, will go automatically on the blockchain. Um, and in addition, so there, this NFT that will be minted will probably go into a different blockchain, maybe on the same blockchain. I don't know. It's high level. But um, uh, yeah, so this will be like a manual process because the user need to to want to mint an NFT. You don't have to mint an NFT to publish uh, with Research Hub. So anyway, this is all pre-publication. So post-publishing, what will happen is, um, let's take a look here. This is like uh, the post page, uh, which can be renamed as a publication page. Um, on the right, we have like some particular transactions that represent the minted, um, well, represent this publication on a blockchain. And the thinking is uh, it will be nice to reference these transaction um, hash uh, IDs where like maybe in the future, other papers that cite this particular publication uh, can have this paper earn some RC. So this is like, again, I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but maybe it can be like, uh, like you know, something to think about. Um, now, this NFT that we just minted will show up somewhere in the page, maybe at the bottom. So we can have something like own a piece of science and support the scientist. Um, <clears throat> some information like how many editions there are, what is the price. Maybe we can even surface here top collector, like who is the top collector, who are the other collectors, and maybe uh, what's the contract address. So I took uh, a lot of this uh, information from OpenSea and Mirror, who are like kind of leading the the, the front on NFTs. <clears throat> so then um, let's take a look at like uh, other pages on the site that will be uh, have NFTs in them. So we have this uh, at the top, like uh, just high level exploration. I redid the header. So maybe in the header, we can have something like discuss, which refers to the current homepage that we have where you have papers and you can discuss them. Bounties, I think for the future, kind of like a, a RFPs maybe or something like that and invest in science. So if you click on invest in science, the idea here, you, you'll see some NFTs, you'll see some projects which are different than NFTs. They're like more crowd fund, crowdfunded initiatives uh, and you'll be able to filter by you know different types so I here I'm, I'm showing like nfts and projects but maybe I just want to see nfts so I can select it from here and um, we can even think about like investment opportunities so we can have like um, maybe some of these nfts or projects can have ip licensing involved where like uh, if there is some kind of uh, revenue generated through intellectual property licensing, the owner of the NFT or maybe people that invested in a crowdfunded project can, can obtain um, as dividends. <clears throat> so that's uh, one page here. Well, thank you. Just to jump in there really quick, um, like the, the dividends part and how, how this will all manifest, even like the invest, this is all subject to like future lawyer review. So like these terms and stuff, like they'll, they'll probably change. Just want to like um, that anybody who, you know, maybe watching later, like in, invest is not the right like concept here, but um, yeah, just wanted to say that, that this will all get reviewed by lawyers before it's like production. Yeah, exactly. This is all like, uh, yeah, uh, all future state kind of thing. A subject to review. Um, so yeah, um, now we can even have like, if we go back to the ELN, what we can do is um, the idea is like, we want to make things as easy as possible. So here we just talked about like fractionalizing your publication, but if you wanted to help raise money for future projects that you're intending to embark on, maybe we expose uh, something on the left side of the ELN, like crowdfund uh, and NFTs, it's a bit different than the fractionalized ownership of your paper. These are like fundraising campaigns versus like uh, fractionalizing ownership of your paper. So I just wanted to make this distinction. <clears throat> um, and then like uh, there's some like really high level like business ideas. Um, so research up can collect royalties from the sales of NFTs. Um, certain NFTs can have IP licensing and research hub can collect royalties from such licensing. Um, 
another thing we talked about is that um you know there is uh, the notion of publishing an nft and then uploading like some kind of a uh, graphic to be associated with your nft and it could be the case that a lot of scientists do not really um you know it's not something that uh, scientists do like art so it could be that research hub can offer some kind of art consulting services to help uh raise awareness for the scientist nfts and there is like a, a bunch of other ideas joyce i'm not sure if you have some other ideas you wanted to uh, kind of throw in here? Yeah, I think in general, um, the design space here is super wide open. And I know a bunch of different teams are approaching this from like different perspectives. And so like Kobe said, this is like the intention here is to start the discussion around what this feature might look like, both in like a V1 and like its final state. So yeah, th this is kind of like a very early way of how we're thinking about it. And so just wanna get like general feedback from everybody, even on like their wildest, like potential implementation of NFTs. So that way we can consider everything fully and move forward with like in theory, uh, what makes the most sense to iterate on. Yeah, exactly. So maybe we open the floor to some, uh, <clears throat> some feedback and questions. Yeah, can you elaborate more about this fractional ownership? Is it, is this a, a real ownership or is it more a collectible? <clears throat> yeah, so in here, if that's yeah, okay. go ahead, sure. Yeah, the idea is that behind an NFT, it's like community recognized ownership. So, um, like an analogy right now is RAC is like a really awesome artist. Who has been minting nfts in order to help like build community and fund his own work as like a musician he releases all of his songs for free so that way anyone can listen to them and the people who are in his community uh value certain songs more than others because you know they perceive them to be better and so that nft goes up in value the more people who want to own it just to say hey i own you know rac's you know version of the song and so um these NFTs can also have like added benefits. Like you get to go to a private concert or like maybe you get to hear the song like two days before anybody else or something like that. And so the idea here is very similar where researchers can kind of act like, uh, you know, a creative artist and uh, publish like an NFT that can be broken into a bunch of different little pieces and spread around a bunch of different people. And anybody who holds like a certain amount of those pieces of the NFT can gain certain privileges. So maybe with one, you can join like a, or you can get access to the scientist lab notebook. With 10, like maybe you can show up and say hi at the lab or something like that. And with like a hundred, you get to be the scientists like plus one to their Nobel prize, you know, award-winning ceremony or something like that. So that's kind of like the overarching concept. Was that explained sort of clearly? So no, no actual ownership. It's kind of stakeholding, but without any executive. For the first version, yes. In the future, there could be something around like licensing, where like if you you need X amount of the fractionalized NFT in order to create a product using that information. So the first version will probably be like community, you know, no actual ownership, but there could be iterations in the future that have like, you know, legal implications tied to them. The, the 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 benefits part reminds me a lot about the talk we had earlier about RC. So in a way, it feels like this NFT uh, branch is going to compete with RC. Is it is that intended, or is, is this undesired consequence? Do you mind elaborating on how you think right. the competition? Because previously, remember we discussed the idea that maybe a person can. Uh, offer a certain amount of REC to be able to attend the lab meetings or have you know, a sneak peek into the ELN for the future project or something like that. And today you have described those benefits as part of the NFT uh, ownership, okay. I guess. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, so long-term, what we plan to do is have a marketplace on Research Hub where mm -hmm. RSC is the trading pair to buy these NFTs. So if you want to attend like the, the lab meeting of the scientist in order to, to buy the NFT, 
you need to get the appropriate amount of RSC, whatever the marketplace says, one, you know, like one one thousandth or one ten thousandth of the NFT is worth. And this also the difference here too, it allows scientists to set their own kind of benefits when like holding RSC may have like website wide benefits. I guess that's uh, Scott. Uh, yo, I'm a little out of breath, um, but this is awesome. Like this is really why I came to Research Hub to, to learn is about the RSC and the DAO and to see the NFTs and what I just saw from Kobe on the NFTs is like, wow, that's really good. Um, my only thought is one, I'd love to be a part of this just from kind of the academic perspective and the, the copyright and licensing perspective, because one of the things I've noticed with the, the NFT space, um, and you can see this, like, I don't know if anyone follows uh, X copy, but he made uh, grifters into the public domain. And what I'm saying is that's not really what he should have done because now even X copy doesn't own grifters. No one owns grifters. And so there, it's just to say uh, on the academic side too, a lot of the problems with copyright and licenses is there's not a good way to know what people have done. Like, have they given a non-exclusive license to someone along the way? And therefore that's applicable when they go at the end to give the exclusive license let's say to the publisher and so to integrate nfts as part of that that licensing copyright system has huge utility in and of itself for solving these kinds of publishing problems related to green access um, versus paywalls etc and i think that's all i had to say just but again like really amazing i was happy i'm, I'm happy i joined when i did to see, see what was going on mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> Thank you. And <clears throat> I have to give a lot of kudos to Jeffrey. Jeffrey is on the call, but um, he gave me a lot of uh, feedback and a lot of ideas that kind of like, I guess, uh, generated these mocks. Scott, I love the idea of having like uh, something to do with the ability to host a version of the website tied to like ownership of the NFT to um, so yeah, that, that's interesting. We definitely have to add some kind of like, I guess, copyright information in. Uh, Ricardo? Yeah, so I still want to take some time to uh, think about like the paper uh, part of the this NFT stuff. But uh, something that I see like immediate that could be uh, pretty interesting is uh, like sort of like replicating what uh, journal covers are. Like there's not a lot of them and people actually like claim that if you go on like website of professors, like they, they put that on the own page. So it could be like something that we could try to like replicate on research hub and could be of like added value for uh, like researchers and uh, professors. And uh, also something else is like some images that maybe you like you, I don't know, you work with some stuff that is like really cool and you take some pictures and you just want to, you think it's like a science kind of art. Like I did some some pictures when I, I was working with some materials. So I was like, wow, this is like pretty cool. And people could actually like this image by itself. Not because it's related to science. It's just like, like a really cool image. And yeah, that's something. Like I see it more on the like image side, but just because I have to think a little bit more on the, on the paper side, because it takes more time probably to process. The image one is more uh, direct, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for sharing, Ricardo. But yeah, I really love the idea. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to piggyback off that if I could too. Um, so, like, um, so what the what I had talked, you know, to Kobe about, and thanks for the shout out, Kobe. Um, was I was thinking about it kind of a little bit like Ricardo, where, um, well, um, actually twofold. So, um, in terms of like more of like an art perspective, and maybe um, the association with the publication um, to be more some exciting immunofluorescent image that comes out of the paper or might be affiliated with the project that might go into the paper. Um, I think um, from like a transferable NFT, I think those are really cool. Um, and maybe you get all the benefits of utilities from owning that like, piece of image that came out of the publication. I think um, ownership of a publication is a little bit of a touchy subject because uh, author authorship is a touchy subject in academia um, and um, I 
think, and, and one of the thoughts that, that I had um, and that, that I, I chatted with Kobe a little bit about was, um, so having this fractionalized NFTs um, and they get minted, but minted for the actual authors of the publication. Um, and then having that not be transferable. So that way you can't just have someone buy in a share of um, like work of that publication. Um, so maybe that's like kind of on that automated back end. Um, and then now we have like a record of say author one did 40% of the work. Now they own 40% of that NFT and um, kind of maybe, if, you know, contingent on legal things. Um, you can have um, some funding come back commensurate with your ownership of the NFT as the author uh, based off of um, maybe, you know, how, how well that publication does downstream of being published. Um, so maybe having a twofold kind of like what Kobe said, but having um, the thing that is transferable be on the, uh, the front end um, where people can actually trade it and buy and own ownership with just images and artwork um, from the publication, but have the actual publication be fractionalized on the back end um, and actually be towards the authors of the paper. Yeah, that makes sense, Jeffrey. So you're saying like uh, here at the very top where we have, we have the DSI blockchain, I think what you're saying is like, um, there basically be like uh, some blocks associated with um, the authors of the papers and and allocated appropriately. So like if I'm the main author, maybe I get 40% ownership and other people get like the rest and that would be like non-transferable. So this will be here at the very top. And then the NFT stuff, which is like the art part of what we're doing here, um, where it's like a, an elective process, you don't have to do it, but you could do it, uh, would happen uh, separately. So I think, uh, is that, am I understanding correctly, Jeffrey? I think I, I think so. I, uh, my laptop died and I switched to my phone uh, halfway, like right as I finished talking. Um, but I, I, based off of the, the last part you said, that it sounds about right. Um, okay, um, cool. Yeah, I have some questions for the community, but like I, I do want to hear some more feedback and some questions if you have any. Uh, happy to explain more of it if you would like. <clears throat> okay, uh, so maybe I ask some of my questions. I guess uh, the first question that I have, and one of the things we talked about earlier, is that so when you mint an NFT, uh, our idea was that uh, you're basically uh, minting an NFT that represents a paper. And the question is, should there be, and let me take one step back actually. So when you're minting this NFT, the intention is that this NFT that represent, uh, you know, some uh, your paper can be purchased by <clears throat> by some buyers. So fractions can be purchased, and uh, you know it can be shown like here, like top collector, other collectors. So people can actually buy these. <clears throat> so my question is, does it make sense to have uh, multiple NFTs associated with the paper? So multiple like pieces of art that can be purchased or exactly one nft that's fractionalized does anyone have any thoughts about that yeah that's cool <clears throat> that's cool if uh oh, there's no thoughts uh, on that too. Kobe. yeah so my thought on that is the more we can make it like the the current nft market the the better off we are um <clears throat> so basically what you're saying is that uh you could mint multiple nfts like uh basically as such <clears throat> that are associated with your paper so uh, what i'm thinking is more of something sorry to the authorship credit issue let's say there's one author there's one nft um which makes it rarer whereas if there's five authors make it an addition of five and each author gets one Mm. <clears throat> I see. Okay. That's interesting. That makes sense. Scott, we were thinking about what, what if you did something where you've got five authors 
so you mint 100 and maybe the first author did more than the last one so the first one gets 30 and the second one gets 20 and the third one gets 10 and the fourth one gets five yeah to... i like that too yeah any kind of model i think fractions add another obstacle to understanding you know wtf going on here so just to make it an addition you know and it's a one you're buying one of something it's just going to be a lot more straightforward for people to get it because it's already going to be a challenge right Something that, I'm, that, that I think about this is, wouldn't that create some friction among the, the, the research group? Like it's, it's like when you have to like put percentages in a, like in a patent. It's something that you don't really want to do, but you know, like you have to do. And like doing that for, for a paper, I don't know, just like putting that, putting that out for like, just wanted to know your opinion on this. Because like when I think about a paper, it's, uh, yeah, also something that I was thinking about is how would that potentially clash with the like academic perspective? Because like, what do you want to do then with the paper? Like you're publishing a research job, okay, but like then do you want to actually put that in a publication? Would that clash? Um, you know, there's going to be some problems uh, for doing that. So yeah, just some questions and wanted to discuss that with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I guess uh, these are all very interesting questions and um i'm not entirely sure myself and i think uh, when one of the confusing parts here is that there is the um the side blockchain something that happens behind the scenes to give you some the author some like uh proof ownership and then there is the other part which is uh nft for purchase and, and what does that mean and and how many parts of it should be published and um yeah that part i'm not so sure myself Honestly. But I'm definitely going to be thinking about that and uh, discussing it with the team. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess, uh, let's see. I think I had like one other question. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, we already answered that question regarding uh, graphics. Um, I guess a uh, high-level question like, uh, what are what do you what do you see as a barrier to entry here? Do you, do you think like if this was were to fail and not work and not be adopted by the scientific community, what do you think are some of the factors that would lead to that? Like, how can we? Uh, I guess, yeah, it just help us plan and do this the right way. I mean, I think that the bi biggest issue is that people won't understand the IP situation. Um, and I think they'll be hesitant to use this if they if there's an implication that through this sale, they're transferring IP in any way. Um, so that, that would just be the immediate gut reaction from a, a, an academic who saw this kind of offering. They would say, oh, well, you know, I don't own the IP, my institution owns the IP, slash maybe five different institutions on the IP. How could I use this product, you know? Mm -hmm. Even okay. though, you know, again, like one problem and opportunity in the NFT space is this idea of an NFT is very, the definition is very flexible. And you're obviously saying that you can define what you're giving away with this NFT through this process, but I don't think people really understand that. All right, do you think it's possible we could start out um, like explicitly saying, hey, you know, these are just community, you know, like achievement tokens, for lack of a better word, right? This has nothing to do with IP. Like there's no actual legal ownership going on here, but it's just you can build a community and if people value it, it'll be valued. And then assuming that's able to work somehow, eventually build in like legal infrastructure to it where people can have an option, you know, maybe two, three years down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think f finding a way to really just define it as, hey, these are collectibles or it's an art project or something like that would be, I think, pretty useful in kind of doing it. I mean, I think figuring out how to do this just in the sandbox of Research Hub within Research Hub is very good, regardless of how much sort of external uptake you have. And if there's, say, a piece of work that's funded by Research Hub and they publish in the Research Hub ELN and you want to use that as like the first NFT that you mint, that makes a ton of sense. Um, but yeah, I think for the wider community, figuring out how you define this and say, look, this is a, 
uh, kind of, it's a fun project, you know, it might not have a ton of utility necessarily, but it's, it's for fun. Um, and defining what that is, I think that could help. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I guess one last question I have uh, for Ari is like, um, do, do you want to sit in on any labs lab meetings? Like, do you want special content that you get access to for like owning, you know, a piece of an NFT? Like, is, is there any appeal to you on like getting access to the scientists in a, in, you know, different way by having the NFT? Um, kinda, I mean, like if there's a really cool publication that comes out and I can, you know, uh, sort of, I guess, increase my standing in the community or be perceived as cool by having some hand in that or some fractional engagement with it. I think that's interesting. Like I personally would, you know, it, it'd be great to say, Hey, actually I, I helped fund this work by partially owning the, the, this NFT that came out of the research or something. That would be cool. Um, in terms of like actually physically attending or physically getting access, maybe, I mean, there, you know, there's obvious stuff like that happening in the music world, for example. So uh, I think theoretically, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my final question to the community is, um, does anyone have any ideas around utility of NFTs? So like uh, basically piggybacking of what Joyce and Ari just talked about um any like interesting utility that we have not yet discussed like by utility i mean like uh things that you can get access to by owning an nft such as access to the eln or like some uh being able to talk to the um author of the paper I mean, definitely for me, like an early view of the research that this fund, the, that the ownership of the NFT is funding is cool. So that's kind of like access to, to the ELN. You know, that's a community development, sort of a goodwill thing where, hey, if I own part of this NFT, I'm supporting this research and maybe I get a monthly update or I get a view of this, of the research activities that are going on, which is just kind of like a feel good thing. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, beyond that, I think obviously owning the IP is very interesting or partial ownership of that when that part is developed. That's probably, you know, the most interesting part uh, long term. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll stop sharing because I know that uh, there's more topics in the agenda, but... Uh... Thanks for presenting, Gobi. Yeah, no problem. And I guess if anybody, right. has, if anybody has any thoughts on NFTs moving forward, we'll be thinking about this for a while. So feel free to DM me or Kobe and we'd love to hop on a call and chat about it more. Cool. Uh, Ricardo, do you want to take it away about the bounty board? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me just present my screen. Can you see it? <clears throat> yep. yep. Okay. Okay, so the idea would be basically to uh, present to you a, uh, let's say a concept of the new uh, bounty program or activity farming, as you wanna call it on our research hub. So for you, for those of you familiar with farming, you pretty much already know what that is. Uh, the idea would be to engage editors in tasks that and not only editors, but mainly editors in tasks that go, let's say, uh, over their traditional role as uh, editors. So like publishing papers and like uh, making comments and so on. So the idea would be to engage in different uh, kind of tasks, like, for example, content creation, like uh, social media, as well as Wafa was saying, we would have uh, a lot of uh, uh, we will need a lot of people to actually help on the social media or marketing side. So uh, by doing that. Uh, a community member or an editor uh, could do so, could do something out of their uh, traditional schedule and get rewarded by uh, with some research coin. And uh, something that I added was also a uh, so-called let's say bonus or uh, performance uh, reward. So based on like the the action that they did, like for example, uh, 
creating this uh, AMA on Research Hub, okay? Uh, so the requirement is like, for example, to, to publish like uh, one AMA, you get this uh, reward. And then if you get more than like uh, five questions, then you get a bonus reward. And that is uh, for, you know, many other tasks. The idea would be to have here uh, different categories of tasks, like for example, people that are more uh, skilled on social media, being able to contribute on social media, uh, people more skilled in uh, content creation, uh, be able to do so. So basically use more the skills of the people that we have in our community, apart from you know what they do uh, every day and what they do like consuming on the platform. And as uh, Jeff said, we uh, basically uh, already started uh, let me pull this up. Okay. We already started uh, putting up our D work page. So we thought that the best idea to, to, to do this is to uh, create working groups or pods where uh, people can, you know, work together, exchange ideas and actually like, you know, help each other uh, trying to achieve like higher goals. And in this case, we already started dividing into some potential uh, categories where people could, you know, start uh, start working, uh, start working like uh, marketing and governance and treasury management and education and so on. And by creating content, by providing value in this uh, working groups, there's going to be like, you know, like an associated uh, bounty, an associated task with a reward, and people will be rewarded. Uh, the idea at the beginning would be to have um, the working groups to be set up on Slack. Because that's what we use uh, for, you know, the community to, you know, uh, arrange communication, uh, but have the payout of the reward not on the work, but directly on the platform. Because that would be just like so much uh, easier. And on the work, we'll just have uh, like, for example, within a particular uh, section, we could have our our task, like uh, task number one. And we could have, you know, uh, someone to like uh, be assigned to the to the task and have our reward selected. Now I just need to connect my wallet. But basically, showing here the reward in RSC or USD, as we uh, sorry USDC as we prefer uh, to do it, and all the rewards actually being paid on the on the platform. Okay, it's not closing. And. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So, do you have any any feedback, any question? I mean, first, I think thank you, Ricardo and Jeff, for taking the lead here. This is awesome. Like, I think being able to like harness the energy of everybody in our community towards like you know bringing more attention to the research hub. Like, this is going to be a, a huge thing. I think. Um, yeah, I guess I'm curious what people think the activities should be to get started if anybody has any suggestions for other things that we should put in here well uh, i would like to add um so if you if no one can think of something right now but if you think of something later um there's actually a like function that we can put on dwork where we can, um, instead of having like kind of like the admins um, set up the tasks, we can also have community put in suggested tasks on Dwork. Um, and then the admins would go and say, yeah, I think this one's good. And then it gets added into the queue as well. So if you do have something, you can add it as a suggested task directly on Dwork. Um, if it's something, say, that you're passionate about and you want to do and it's not listed there, uh, you could do it on there as well. I would say on a first phase, we could even have uh, let me know what you think, Jeffrey. Uh, like a suggestion box on Slack for people who the baby teaser, just like before actually like jumping on the work, it's just easier to like put it there on Slack. So we could have like a suggestion kind of like channel and then we will do the work at least at the beginning and put it down on like, uh, put down on, on the work. If people are not. Cool. It would be cool if uh, regular users would also be able to fulfill those tasks through the editors, right? So kind of a, a supervised goal accomplishment type of procedure. Do you mean, uh, Anton, do you mean like um, regular community members, non-editors actually mm -hmm. using the, um, yeah, so anybody can use the, um, can use Dwork and complete tasks, any community member, and any community member will be able to join a working group, you know, if they're so passionate about um, whatever the topic is of that working group. So. Uh, yeah, so it's not it's not limited to just editors. Gotcha. Thanks.
I'll link this to our uh, help page too, just in case anybody's like browsing around, they might be able to stumble upon it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to like uh, make it easily accessible so people know where to where to get to it. Yeah, so these are uh, like concept kind of tasks. So I don't know, like before putting that out, if you want to just like double check like what's what's in there, because like people maybe say it's like sees that they can create a podcast and get like i don't know like 800 heresy uh like they, they were just tasks because i was thinking about something to put there but like my creativity is not like a uh, top notch so <clears throat> we can just like discuss that uh even further in the future <clears throat> uh molik you have a question you have a question yeah uh, sorry this might be a dumb question but where is uh d work so is it on slack or Oh, uh, let me. Uh, let me uh, um, posted the link here the link in here the uh, chat, chat, but we should probably we do should like probably an, do in the in the in Slack, in well. Slack as well. Okay, okay. So this is a different app, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Scott. No, that's that's probably from before. Cool. Well, thanks again for sending this all up, Ricardo. Anton, we've got like two minutes left. So should we breeze through anything else on the agenda? Hard to say. We have a thing for next week, right? So we'll have to postpone whatever we can review today for two yeah, weeks. So for next week, um, I wanted to do like a shared community call with another DSI project, which is called the uh, Smart Contract uh, Research Forum. Um, they've been organizing like a lot of the community stuff in the DSI space. And Anton and I are actually going on their podcast tomorrow afternoon recording it. Um, and so next week, we plan to basically host them during our community call to give feedback on their perspective of building like a, a blockchain style peer review system. And then during the same call, we'll present basically like our perspective and kind of what we're thinking of building and they'll share feedback as well. And then I, I'm also going to join their community call and invite anybody else from our community who wants to show up there to like kind of like make friends and say hi and help to share feedback on everything as well. So kind of like a shared community call next week. So I guess we should just postpone for now for two weeks. Jeffrey, you can up update everyone on the listings and everything. Yeah, that's totally time. fine. We, we could also do it now, Jeffrey, if you want to take another like five, 10 minutes. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, it, it will be very brief. Um, so uh, as for, OK, so um, first off, I'll, I'll touch on grants. Um, so we, we were lucky to get um, put up onto Gitcoin. Um, and the uh, the matching period um, so started from March 9th uh, and it goes out to I believe March 23rd or 24th um, and so that is if you do donate to um, to the re to research hub via Gitcoin um, your whatever money you input will be matched to a certain percentage um, so I think we've already got like a few hundred bucks um, donated um, and so that money is going to go towards uh, uh, into the kind of the community treasury. Um, and then hopefully um, once March 23rd or 4th comes around, um, we can uh, get some money going um, for like different bounties and maybe liquidity and things like that. Um, so that's for Gitcoin. Um, another one that we had applied for uh, is Hyperscale. Uh, I actually had like a little 10 minute interview with them last Friday. Um, and so they're going to like discuss some of the other topics and then uh, so might be receiving funding as well via um, Hyperscale, which is really cool. And uh, I think um, there's a lot of grants. And actually I actually want to give a shout out to Clay. Uh, Clay put up this list of grants for us a while back uh, that I was using. Um, and so I think going forward, one thing on DWORK that we could do is um, kind of outsource this to the community um, and then like kind of get it, it's twofold it helps get money um, into the community treasury via donations but also um, gets exposure to research hub um, by being seen on all these like funding and um, grant uh, kind of applications so uh, that's that's the update on that front and then um, as for coin gecko um, listing um, we there seems to be a hiccup we I submitted the application weeks ago um, 
And so we're still really waiting on approval. Uh, it got denied and then I sent in an appeal. Uh, so I will follow up with them, but they're very opaque about what is needed in your application to get it approved. Um, so that's a little bit um, kind of difficult to follow up with. And I just submitted the coin market cap application a few days ago as well. Um, and that's, that's mainly the updates. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, very much appreciate you leading the Gitcoin and hyperscale stuff too. I know that's like a ton of work. So, so Jeff's been putting in like a lot of work behind the scenes. Very much appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> Cool. Ethan, um, do we have anything else? Uh, we wanted to talk about how to support the ELN publications, but I don't know if we still have time. People are still jumping into the calls. <laughs> I, think well. it's, I think it's because of the daylight. The time, um, yeah, daylight savings makes sense. Um, cool. Yeah, do, do you want to go ahead and uh, kind of set context? Sure. So, I mean, we should probably value the in-the-house content that one of the editors or other users produce really, really highly. And so you might remember the recent ELN post. Uh, uh, does anyone have a link that they can share? Yeah, I'll dig it up. Yeah, and, and, and so it would be nice if we could organize as a community to highlight such posts a little bit more, so perhaps Curious what everyone here uh, here thinks. What actions we can do to support it? For example, announcements in Slack, maybe tweeting about it from personal Twitters or you know Research Hub Twitters. Make a Reddit post, make a fa for Facebook group post, stuff of that nature. What do you think? I'm all for it. I think we should. Um highlight things that I think are amazing and that Research Hub was intended to be for. Um, I think we should especially highlight those things. Yeah, both internally on Slack and, you know, externally, like through, for example, through uh, Twitter. That's this would be something that should be something that we highlight, definitely. Yeah. Kobe? Mm, yeah, I think at the very least, uh, and I could be wrong about this, but what I think would be, uh, I, sorry, I think my computer is freaking out. Okay, can you hear me again? Yep. Yeah, my computer is just going nuts today. But I think, um, I'm just trying to think about from the perspective of someone who's publishing in the ELN, I think what they would like to see is uh, some meaningful, constructive feedback on their publication. Uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, so if I'm not wrong, I would say that that is what uh, I would recommend the community help out with. I mean, it could be. I, I see in the comment section that maybe perhaps the feedback wasn't what was this this, this particular post was intended for. It's a little bit in an interesting spot right now because it's it's not exactly publication yet. D does it have a DOI as well? No, I think Dali is planning to share the actual preprint once we have the ability to add DOIs, which should be mm. sometime this week, hopefully. Yeah, but it's much more effort than a regular post. So I wonder how we can support this niche product, I guess. So I, th I think what we can do is just make a concerted effort to comment on these posts. Like I'll, I'll read it through again tonight and add like a comment and a question. And like, if anybody else has time, I think that would be worthwhile. Um, and then in the future, things that we can do is anytime there's like a preprinty type piece of content shared through the ELN, um, you know, whoever sees it first can post it to the community channel and the editor channel and say, hey, like, this is awesome. Somebody published something new. Like, let's get a bunch of eyeballs here and like, you know, show our support for people like putting their content out through Research Hub. And then like I can tweet about it. And then the other thing we can do is we can email our user base about it. It's not like an ideal thing to do because it's a little spammy, but we could say, hey, here's like a, you know, a paper on like ecology. Like if anybody like has insight into ecology, like come stop by and say what you think. The author's here. Um, so yeah, I think we can like manually draw a decent amount of attention to like 
publications that are coming out of the ELN. Yeah, also making sure that it stays in like trending for some time. I mean, I've seen it in trending, in the trending section for some time. But yeah, just making sure that posts like these uh, stay there to get, you know, visibility. Do you think it, it makes sense to give it some sort of uh, special badge that is, yeah. you know, made in the house? Agree, agree. Yeah, that's yeah, a great idea. The in the house badge, I like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so one other thing, like I think that this sort of ties to um, Ricardo uh, got on a, a feedback phone call with one of his colleagues, um, and one of the biggest pieces of feedback we received was that uh, he would be compelled to use Research Hub if he was compensated within like the infrastructure or incentive structure of the current academic system. And like Research Coins are nice, but it's not as valuable to him as citations. And so one thing that we can do is we have a community we can leverage to help like share people's papers, which might help to increase their citations. There are studies that say, if you just do one tweet about your paper, you get 60% more citations on it. So in theory, if Ricardo's friend published through Research Hub, we could get like two or three people to spend two or three hours just like posting to subreddits, like different forums where it may be relevant. Um, just like sharing it around the internet to help like in theory increase their like expected citations after a year or so and if we're able to like say hey if you post research hub you get a little digital marketing team that'll help to like you know spread the word about your work i think that's also a compelling thing where people might share with us because it'll help their careers out so yeah i think starting to think about how we can help get people citations by publishing through research hub would also be useful Good luck. Yeah. Um, so when when somebody publishes on um, ELN, um, uh, and I'm just asking, like, is it is it assigned um, to one of the hubs like dermatology or immunology and stuff? Then maybe the editor of that hub um, can you know kind of take a little bit of a lead in I don't know posting it on Twitter or uh, you know even the first comment and stuff. Because uh, I don't know if presently like that batch or hub is assigned in ELN. There should be a hub that it's posted under. And yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Like, like somehow, like somehow be in charge of leading the uh, uh, like marketing, like effort. marketing effort. Cool. I guess any any other thoughts on that topic, Anton? Should should we like build anything to help make this happen? Hard to say. You, do you think it should be a community effort or an engineering effort? So I, I think we should be able to get some comments um, on Dahlia's uh, post just by placing an emphasis on it. But I, I can see like long term something like influencing the hot score where like publications on research hub that are published through our ELN, you know, get some kind of inherent advantage or something like that um, does make sense. Or even pinning it or having a badge. Yeah, I think it would be especially uh, important for the actual publication that she intends to submit, right? So the preprint with, with the DOI I think That's when we should go all out and tweet about it, share about it too highlight how research hub can improve your citation count i guess yeah totally going, going back to to nfts we could have like a first blog post on research hub kind of thing could be cool like hey i posted the first like you know kind of post like and there's an nft for this i don't know just like putting that because we were talking about this Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Or, or people could set up bounties, you know, through our D work using RSC. Like they could say, hey, please promote my paper. Like here's a bunch of RSC to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That also really makes sense. Yeah. Alec? Yeah. And it, I think if, if we're doing this uh, through ELN, I guess another uh, thing to look out for is if we can eventually get like some way or form like establish the impact factor 
for research hub you know like uh, that's a big thing in academia where um, people want to publish in higher impact factor journals and um, I know right now it's it's a little too early but even if it is you know something like 0 0.5 or 1 or whatever where, wherever we stand and if we, if, we, if we reach at a higher impact factor then more people would be um, attracted especially in academia to publish and post through us Yeah totally. yeah, totally. I mean, I think I it mean, makes sense make sure sure that, uh, that uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, like, if you share your paper through Research Hub, that it like not only earns you tokens, but helps to increase your standing within the current system. So basically, citations. So uh, yeah, I think there's we could put some thought into how publishing with Research Hub ends up maximizing citations, and then impact factor as a downstream result. Cool. Well, I guess, uh, do you all have anything else for us? Um, thanks for staying for the extra 15 minutes to cover it all. We probably need to make some sort of, an some sort of announcement about the daylight savings. Oh, yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> Got to get everybody plugged into Google Calendar. Yeah, it adjusts me like uh, automatically for me, so I can notice that because it's gonna take place in like two two weeks for me. But it was like I saw it actually; it's pretty good for me now. It's like at ten p.m., so I like it more. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks everybody. Um, yeah, we'll see you next week uh, for the combined peer review one. So, yeah. bye guys. Bye everyone.